Next, we have member statements. The member for University Rosedale. Thank you. Our Monday was an emotional roller coaster for democratically minded people across Toronto. First, Ontario Superior Court Justice Edward Bellababa ruled that the Conservative government's move to slash Toronto City Council while the election is already underway has substantially interfered with both the candidates and the voters' rights for freedom of expression as guaranteed under the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. People rejoiced that their election would no longer be thrown into chaos. Then, to the shock of nearly everybody, Premier Ford announced that he would be invoking the non-withstanding clause to overrule the court's decision. Doug Ford also intends to continue to use this power and this clause should any charter ruling be used to stop his vindictive whims. This is the first time in Ontario's history any Premier has ever... Remember again, we have to call the Premier by the name Premier, not by his personal name. Same thing with the Cabinet Ministers, same for everybody and their rights. Continue. This is the first time in Ontario's history any Premier has ever tried to use this clause. It is shocking that other members of his caucus, such as the Attorney General, are not only failing to stop him but are actually enabling this power grab. Doug Ford, the, the Premier, has violated the rights of Torontonians. The size of Toronto City Council is a decision for the people of Toronto. This election belongs to the people of Toronto. We do not support the use of Section 33, nor do we support any plan by the Premier to use public money to fund an appeal of the court's ruling. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Thornhill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And we're in the high holiday period for the Jewish community, and it's high holy, H-O-L-Y, and then separate word days, not holidays. Uh, which is what most people say, and it sounds like holidays, because it's actually a serious time. It's a time to really reflect on the past year, uh, think about the next year. Um, in the Jewish community, we understand that people are imperfect and that we can always do better. Um, so um, it's, um, it's a serious time of year, but yet a celebration. Uh, we dip apples in honey or bread in honey, if there's no apples around wherever you are, uh, to wish each other a sweet new year. And I want to wish everybody here in the legislature a meaningful um, year, a, a prosperous year, and a year where they, you accomplish it. Set, we set some goals. We all have our own personal goals, uh, perhaps in our riding, perhaps something that we cared about, a reason why we wanted to be elected. Um, and then we have uh, goals that we're working on with the rest of our teams. Uh, this is the year now. We just had Rosh Hashanah, which literally means head of the, the year. Um, and it's you know not commonly called the Jewish New Year, and this is the year of 5,779 in the Hebrew calendar. Um, it's a big number, and if we reflect on it, we realize how long uh, the Jewish community has been around and has been uh, at the forefront of a lot of our laws and a lot of our legal systems are based on ancient, ancient uh, Jewish efforts. Um, so Shana Tova, everybody, and Shana Tova Umetuka. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Speaker. I rise in the House today to talk about a phenomenal woman. Her name is Sarah Doucette, and she is my local city councillor for Ward 13 in Parkdale High Park. Sarah has represented our community at Toronto City Council for the last eight years. So much of what we love about our community is thanks to Sarah's hard work. She saved our beloved High Park Zoo from closing. She brought our community together and rebuilt Jamie Bell Park when it was destroyed by arson. She defended our public libraries from cuts. She protected our trees in the neighborhoods. She has worked to preserve our city's heritage. She did all this and so much more. We all know how important it is to have a strong local councillor. From my experience, I can tell you, Sarah knows how to do her job very well, and more importantly, she always puts the concerns of, and the needs of our community at the heart of all of her work. It is a real loss to Parkdale Hyde Park and to our city that a strong, hardworking councillor like Sarah, who has delivered results for our community, is not seeking re-election in a 25-ward race. As another Parkdale High Park councillor said, quote, it is a crime that we are losing her, end quote. Sarah, we love you, 
Thank you for everything that you have done for us. We are so proud that you represented us so well at City Hall for the last eight years. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Mississauga East Cooksville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I'm really excited about showcasing Mississauga, uh, my city that I love uh, for the last 15, 16 years. Uh, summer has come to an end, students have gone back to school, and we, or I am wondering how long I will have in retiring my barbecue for the summer. Looking back, Mr. Speaker, the residents of Mississauga hosted many events from small to largest in Ontario in celebrating cultural diversity. Just in August, I took part in Pakistan, India, and Ukraine's Independence Day celebration. Sri Lankan Friendship Cricket Cup matches, Ontario 55 plus games ceremony, a multitude of multicultural festivals ranging from a few hundred to a few thousands, art festivals, the Italian, Filipino, Latin, and Polish festivals, and Muslim Fest, where our premier made an appearance in front of thousands of guests celebrating various cultures from many parts of the world and Islamic art. Mr. Speaker, Mississauga is known for its diversity and we know how to celebrate it. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, I rise to speak as the anti-racism critic for the official opposition. In this role, I am tasked with keeping an eye on the ways that the system is used to embed inequity into law and practice. Over the course of the last two days, since the Premier invoked the notwithstanding clause, which suspends our charter rights, I've received over 200 emails from Kitchener Centre residents asking me to speak out against this abuse of power. His vow to invoke this clause whenever he disagrees with the judiciary, and I quote from a, a Kitchener Centre resident, would establish a very dangerous precedent, and I'm concerned about the effects on our province's democracy. The reason that the official opposition keeps emphasizing the gravity of this decision is that the suspension of our constitutionally protected charter rights has historically led to the attempt to embed injustice into law and normalize it in practice. Historically, governments have invoked this clause to attack the most marginalized among us. For example, under a Conservative government in Alberta, this clause was invoked in Bill 26 to limit financial damages a person could receive from the government after a woman successfully sued for being part of a eugenics project. Mm -hmm. It was later invoked by the PC government in Alberta to, as an attempt to block same-sex marriage. So I asked the government this. If slavery was legal in Ontario today, would it be just to engage in the slave trade, or would it be right to make a change? Thank you. Order. Member statements. Member for Scarborough Guildwood. Thank you, Speaker. I want to first begin by thanking the many brave and vocal citizens who joined here today. As, and yesterday, Speaker, um, those who joined in this chamber, out front on the lawn of the Legislature, at City Hall in the square, to ensure that their voices were heard in opposition to Bill 31 and the immoral use of the notwithstanding clause. It's clear to me that people understand that the Charter of Rights and Freedoms represents deep meaning in Ontario. Ontarians are waking up to the harsh realities of this Premier and his government. Why should Torontonians have less? Why should Toronto be singled out? The Premier is doubling down on his decisions, despite the ruling and despite five years of consultations that led to the 47-seat Council decision. The Premier and his Conservatives are attempting to divide our great city, a move that I and my constituents in Scarborough Guildwood feel is deeply damaging for the City of Toronto. I've received hundreds of emails to this effect. What I'm hearing from the people of Scarborough is that their trust has been broken. People like Jane, who wrote to say, these are the tactics and the words of a bully, a bully who seeks to divide rather than bring people together. Thank you. 
Member Statements. Member for King Vaughan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Rich, hist rich history in our cultural heritage lives in the village of Kleinberg in the city of Vaughan at the annual Beinard Twine Festival. The roots of this festival began in the 1800s when farmers came into the village to buy twine to bind their wheat together. In, in 1967, the year of our centennial, a small committee revived the concept after a hiatus as Kleinberg's centennial project, and that included the late Pierre Burden, who proudly hailed from the village of Kleinberg. Today continues on as a festival that brings thousands of people together, showcasing the incredible talent of our artisans, our small business people, and our entrepreneurs. I want to thank the hundreds of volunteers from the riding of King Vaughan and across the GTA who contribute to this festival and the strength and value it represents to contributing uh, to our community and to our heritage. I'm encouraging all residents of the GTA to join me this Saturday in Kleinberg for this wonderful opportunity to come together in support of many local charities, including the development of the Vaughan Hospital. And I'm reminded by a quote by Mr. Burden, who said, and we, shall, we still seek the countryside with nostalgia, affection, and longing. Hope to see you this Saturday. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Davenport. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise in the House today because Ontario is facing urgent challenges, the impacts of which I see every day in my riding of Davenport. I see it with seniors who simply can't afford or find adequate housing, in young people who can't find steady work, and with children studying in schools so badly in need of repairs that they are literally crumbling around them. I see the impacts in the overcrowded streetcars, buses and subways where riders wedge themselves in just to make it to work on time. And I see it in the rising death toll for the ongoing, from the ongoing opioid emergency ravaging our communities. Instead of taking on these challenges, this government is taking things from bad to worse with cuts to school repair funding, mental health funding, and the outright cancellation of programs that would prevent opioid overdoses. But, most egregious is the fact that the government has allowed the Premier's obsession with Toronto's municipal elections to consume the business of this House, to the point that we are now debating the very suspension of Ontarians' charter rights in order to make it happen. I am deeply proud that our official opposition caucus has said no to this clear abuse of power, and on behalf of the people of Davenport and all Ontarians, we will continue to do whatever we can to safeguard our democratic institutions, uphold the rule of law, and protect our fundamental rights. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements. Member for Simcoe North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Earlier this week, at the invite of Brian Elliott, VP of Field Operations for Delta Elevators, I visited the Whitby campus of Durham College to learn about their skilled trades programs. I was hosted by Don Lavisa, president of Durham College, Kevin Baker, dean of School of Skilled Trades Apprenticeship and Renewable Technology, and their teams. I learned the following. The college's post-secondary enrollment in skilled trades has grown 359% in the last 10 years. Apprenticeship enrollment at Durham College is unfortunately unchanged from 2011 to today. The college is performing over capacity with 1,445 students enrolled in skilled trades, 1,300 apprentices, and 150 youth apprentices. The Elevating Devices Mechanic program has a wait list of 200 apprentices. This is a five-year backlog. A fully licensed elevator mechanic can start by earning $115,000 per year. One of Durham College's industry partners has recently forecast a shortage of approximately 3,000 skilled labour people. This visit was very informative. It was exciting to experience the attitudes, activity and engagement of the students, especially in the first week back to school. As we execute our plan to make Ontario open for business, it is important that we ensure the availability of skilled labour to drive business growth. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Cambridge. Speaker. <clears throat> Yesterday, Cambridge-based ATS Automation Tooling Systems Incorporated, an industry-leading automation solutions provider, and Bruce Power celebrated the grand opening of the major component replacement or MCR integration testing facility on the ATS Cambridge campus. Organizations such as ATS and Bruce Power are helping to spur innovation and economic growth, benefiting all of Ontario. 
This year, ATS is celebrating 40 years of being a meaningful part of many local families' lives, providing highly skilled employment opportunities while benefiting from the depth and breadth of the talent in the Cambridge-Waterloo region. Meanwhile, Bruce Power is Canada's only private sector nuclear generator and the largest operating nuclear facility in the world. They produce 6,400 megawatts of affordable electricity daily, providing 30% of Ontario's electricity at 30% less than the average cost to produce residential power. Bruce Power's ongoing operations and MCR project will support 22,000 direct and indirect jobs annually and provide $4 billion in annual domestic economic benefit through direct and indirect spending on equ equipment, supplies, materials and labour income in Ontario. At the same time, Bruce Power's supply chain acquires 90% of its goods and services in Ontario, creating good jobs right here at home. Partnerships such as these between ATS and Bruce Power are, are innovating and creating jobs throughout the province and creating Made in Ontario solutions for major infrastructure projects. This joint facility attests to Ontario's future-looking innovation, which has always been a hallmark of the Cambridge community. I'm proud to bring this announcement into the House and demonstrate the strong work of Ontario businesses. Thank you. That concludes the time we have this afternoon for member statements. Reports by committees.